So picture this, you get your last $20 in your wallet and you're putting together a used PC that you just hustled and you've built a Ryzen PC in the past and you've got a spare Wraith Spire cooler. Very odd scenario I know, but you don't want to go out and buy a new Cooler Master 212 because that'll add to the cost of the build. So there is an option and that is mount the Wraith Spire to your existing Intel H55 motherboard like I've done here. So today's video is going to be a little bit of a hack, it's also going to be a little bit of a story because I know everyone loves a good story. Okay, okay. Well, the dust was really thick. Anyway, let's get on with it, shall we? Welcome back to Tech Yes City. This is Brian coming to you guys today with a video on how you could mount your existing Wraith Spire cooler to a H55 motherboard, or even they might even fit the LGA 1155s or 1151s or 1150s. I know Intel released a lot of different sockets uh, basically around the same amount of pins uh, but they do indeed have a slight variations to the way they're mounted now this bracket here is from a noctua kit i believe and it's got the linings up and this is how i realized it may have worked in the first place is because i lined this cooler up here uh, with the wraith spire this is actually just a small one i've already mounted the wraith spire in a previous build i did i'll put the link up here but uh, this here actually lined up pretty well the existing holes for the fan and now what I think's happened with this cooler is I think Cooler Master have been licensed to make the coolers for AMD. I know they did on their uh, Radeon graphics cards in the past. And Cooler Master have actually been making coolers for a while. So the mold would have been made back in the day. And I've actually had experience with a couple of these Cooler Master coolers already. They're actually pretty thick. They're of high quality and they do a pretty good job of cooling. And now my first experience was actually on an LGA 1156 motherboard where you could screw down one of these coolers. So I believe they've even possibly used the existing mold of these coolers and just adapted them to add the AM4 screws for the new Ryzen CPUs. So you've got these existing holes here that now if you go out and get some self tappers and put washers on them, make sure you use washers that are non-conductive, uh, then you can easily mount these coolers by just uh, literally screwing them down from behind and matching up the holes. Now in the case of the motherboard I had, it was an ASRock H55 motherboard and you could only uh, mount it on the diagonal because it didn't line up perfectly. However, diagonally mounting a cooler is still better than uh, not mounting it properly at all. You'll still get a really good connection. In the case of this Intel cooler, it only weighs 180 grams. So it doesn't have a lot of cooling potential at all. And in fact, I used it in a previous video where I could only really get the CPU up to around about 3.5 gigahertz. And this got it up to 3.8 gigahertz. So there is a difference because this cooler, well not this exact one, but the Ray Spire is closer to 400 grams. I think it's about 420 grams. So you're getting literally like 2.5 times better the cooling potential out of the Ray Spire than you would out of this Intel cooler. Now another thing as well, it's got a copper base. And this is an interesting thing about this cooler because it's not permanently attached uh, to the actual aluminium on the cooler. So it's got the copper base, but when I hammered it down, and this was because the standard height of the Wraith Spire was actually hitting the capacitors and this was causing it not to cool properly. I was getting like immediately 90 degrees out of the box. And so I got a hammer to it and I banged it down and I noticed the actual aluminium around the copper heat base was actually falling down. So it isn't permanently attached. So there are a little few weaknesses on this cooler but it still did a fine job. Again, 3.8 gigahertz on H55 motherboard in less than ideal ambient temperatures, which are above 25 degrees. It basically, until it gets to winter here, the temperatures are always gonna be above 25 degrees. But anyway, back on topic, the Raid Spire, especially compared to these little coolers here from Intel, they do do a better job of cooling and they do remain quieter. Uh, so if you do wanna mount these now, as I said before, go get yourself some self-tapping screws. Uh, and also you may wish to detach these original screws here on this cooler. And so you just do this with, by getting a pair of pliers and then uh, literally just tearing them off. And then you can begin to mount this cooler uh, onto your motherboard. But anyway, what about the screws themselves? Well, you do have to use specific screws. I'd say anywhere from 20 to 30 mil. And I would recommend getting self tappers unless you wanna pre-drill out the holes yourself in the actual cooler. The thickness of the screws themselves, I'll put that in the description below for you guys. Uh, but I had just had these four screws lying around in my screw jar. I've literally been over the years collecting screws from all walks of life. So I'll put the details in the description below for what screws you should be using. 
Uh, but after you've done that, you just self-tap them in. But one thing to be careful of is make sure you don't cross-thread the uh, actual screws in going into the cooler. And also, if you're screwing it in, it is a bit of a hard fit. So if your bolt is getting threaded as well on the top, uh, make sure you don't go too hard and actually break the screw because you'll then just be wasting a lot of time. So uh, what I'd recommend doing is if you're coming into a bit of a trouble, maybe have a few extra screws lying around and then just unscrew that screw and then try a different screw. So yeah, and if you also mount it on a diagonal, it's still gonna do a better job than cooling uh, than this Intel cooler. As I said before, I could only get this thing to max out around 3.57 gigahertz, I think it was. This thing got it to 3.8 gigahertz in I believe hotter ambient temperatures. So it does give you a little bit of a boost to performance even on the diagonal mount. And it of course does have the novelty factor of looking a lot cooler than a stock Intel cooler. Anyway guys, my monitors in the background, they switched off automatically after 10 or 15 minutes or something like that. So uh, if you guys enjoyed the video, then make sure you hit that like button. I have also heard of people uh, mounting the Wraith uh, Max with the LED lights on Intel motherboards. So you can do a lot more with these coolers. And of course you can spend a bit more money if you wish to go for a pro setup. This is more or less uh, a basic hack if you're on a budget and you actually legitimately want to use this cooler to get better gains, uh, which is what I used it for in a recent budget build. So hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Make sure you hit the like button if you haven't already, and I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Also, yeah, I'm just trialing out these monitors behind me because um, getting the right height and then we're gonna wall mount them. Might even do that later today and then start fixing up this studio, making it look perfecto. And I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now, bye. Uh, the list of, so the cooler itself does, but so, but anyway, back on topic, 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 but anyway. Back on topic.